Hey, I'm Carbo Brother. I'm Chris Nelson, president of Carbo. Really excited to introduce the new trigger spring kit for your SKS. Yes, we're really excited and happy that we were able to do something for the SKS. Fantastic firearm that deserves a much smoother, lighter trigger pull. As we all know, pretty heavy, pretty stiff. Mass produced firearms. I mean, this is a ton of history here. I mean, a lot of fun to take this baby apart. Not to mention, you've probably got a ton of Cosmoline all over the place. Um, and also a good time to check your serial numbers, see if you actually do have matching serial numbers. Really quick, easy installation. Let's jump on the tabletop, put this baby in. Parts and tools needed for this build, the SKS Trigger Spring Kit by Carbo. 3 seconds inch punch, 1 8 inch punch, small hammer, larger hammer, block of wood with a hole in it, and as always guys, make sure you're wearing iPro. Let's go ahead and clear our firearms together before we get started. Check the chamber, check the bolt face, check the magazine well. This firearm's clear. Let's see what kind of factory trip we're starting with. Four pounds, 3.3 .3 ounces. Let's take one more to confirm. Four pounds, 2.8 ounces. While we're going through this, great opportunity to check your serial numbers if you already haven't done so. Right here on the back of the receiver cover is one stamped serial number as well. Right here on the trigger guard, that's two. On the magazine cover, that's three, four. On the receiver and the bolt carrier is five. And then up here on the gas tube is six. So you're going to see six places with the stamp serial number, but you're also likely going to see a hand etched serial number as well. We got one here on the trigger guard, then inside on the bolt and the bolt carrier. Really interesting. You know, if you've got matching numbers, that's great. If you've got numbers that don't match, not the end of the world. Likely yours has seen a lot of action, so that's kind of cool too. Uh, they did cannibalize these and, you know, the parts are interchangeable, so they would take one, fix up another. It's a historic, fun piece of history that we all get to shoot. But let's make this trigger pull just a little bit better. So we'll start by rotating our takedown latch 90 degrees. We'll push in on the receiver cover just a little bit, and then we'll pull out on that takedown latch. Then we're gonna pull up and out on the receiver cover. Set that aside. You'll also notice a little serial number hand etched inside there. Now we'll go ahead and pull out on the recoil spring. Set that aside. Now we'll pull back on the bolt carrier. Pull up and out on the bolt carrier. You can see there's your hand etched serial number on the inside of the bolt carrier. And also, your bolt. Pull out the bolt, see another hand etched serial number. It's a secondary number, it doesn't match the primary stamp number, but it's a way of keeping track of all these other internal components that do match up and mate with one another. Now let's go ahead and focus on the trigger assembly. Go ahead and put your safety on safe. That's gonna allow enough clearance for this trigger guard release button to actually compress and release the trigger guard. Take your 3 seconds inch punch, it'll fit perfectly into that little hole. Then take your bigger hammer and give it a good little whack. There it is. All right, the trigger assembly is out. Let's go ahead and dive into this a little further. So you can see you've got your magazine latch release right here. And this is a sear spring and magazine latch release spring. So you can see how stiff that is. You've got your sear right here. You've got your disconnector right here. Your hammer right here. Your hammer spring and your hammer strut underneath that. And then this is your trigger return spring right there. Now we're gonna go ahead and tap out this hinge pin up front here. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this magazine latch and spring. So this hinge pin up front on your trigger assembly, doesn't matter if you got the safety on or off. We're gonna go ahead and tap out this front hinge pin, go ahead and place it over the hole in your block of wood. Take your 3 seconds inch punch, position that over the pin, and then take your hammer and give it a couple good taps. All right, you can see that right there. So the pin is most of the way out, actually. So you can pull it, the pin all the way out or you can leave it just like that. That'll make it easy putting it back in. But most importantly, we wanna remove this magazine latch and spring. And there's the sear right there. So we're gonna really lighten this trigger pull up. I can't wait. Let's go ahead and do a quick side-by-side -side between the factory stock spring and the M-Carbo trigger spring kit. Let's go ahead and open up the spring kit now. All right, you can already see some obvious differences right away. Wow, look at that. So I got the M-Carbo spring here on the left and I've got the factory spring here on the right massive amount of difference. I mean, this M-Carbo spring is super light, just enough. 
Man, this is gonna be great. So let's go ahead and put in the Imcarbo spring now. Really straightforward from here. You're gonna take your Imcarbo sear spring, magazine latch spring, and slide that over the guide rod on the magazine latch. Then we're gonna go ahead and insert that in the trigger assembly. If you've got your pin started like this, you're golden, or we can just get it in there and then hammer it all the way through. You'll see that little notch, how it locates in on the trigger assembly. And then also that spring will actually capture inside the sear right here. Then we're gonna compress it and then we're gonna go ahead and push that hinge pin all the way through. So if you've already got it started, you can start by pushing down on your block of wood. Likely anyway though, you're gonna need your hammer. Hold that sear spring, magazine latch spring back by compressing on the magazine latch. Take your hammer and give it a few good taps. Make sure you line up that pin with the opposite hole on the other side. So we need to go ahead and get it started first. Then we need to double check, make sure we're lined up, which we are, and continue tapping. Go ahead and position it over that hole in your block of wood. Double check, make sure you're going through. Yep, no problem. We just wanna make sure it's nice and even, just like that, so we're golden. Now we can release that magazine, oh man. We can release that magazine latch. Feel how much lighter that is. Yeah, that's gonna be great. All right, let's go ahead and put this baby in. Now we're gonna go ahead and insert the trigger assembly back into the SKS. Go ahead and set up your SKS on the block of wood like so. We want this tip of the disconnector to insert into this hole right here, and then this hinge pin is gonna locate into the channel, but disconnector, then hinge pin. So disconnectors lined up in the hole, then we're gonna drop it right in. You're gonna see that hinge pin go forward and locate into the channel. Now, the safety needs to be unsafe to give us enough clearance to get that actual trigger guard button to lock in and locate. Now we're gonna take the palm of our hand and give it a good whack on the serial number. There we go. Now let's go ahead and flip our SKS around, leave that magazine cover unlocked. You want your takedown lever to be open, position it upright, and let's put the rest of this firearm back together. Now we're gonna go ahead and insert the bolt carrier and the bolt. They go together just like a puzzle, real simple, and test that firing pin, make sure it moves nice and free. Then we're gonna insert this unit back, down, and forward all that one complete motion. Next, we're gonna go ahead and insert the recoil spring. You'll notice a wavy portion on the recoil spring and then a straighter portion. If you look a little closer, you'll see a thicker guide rod and a thinner guide rod. The wavy portion of the recoil spring with the thinner guide rod is gonna go inside the bolt carrier like so. Then you're gonna take your receiver cover. You're gonna capture the back of that recoil spring on the receiver cover and slide it forward. You're also gonna locate that takedown pin into the opposite side of the receiver and lock it forward like so. Now you can go ahead and latch your magazine cover and we're good to go. Now that our rifle is about to go, let's go ahead and do a quick function check. Charge it, let the bolt forward. It's on safe, pull the trigger, nothing good. Pull the trigger, Woo -hoo. Let's go ahead and test this trigger pull. Now let's see what kind of modified trigger pull we got. Two pounds, 7.2 ounces. Now let's take one more to confirm. Two pounds, 7.5 ounces. Well, there you have it, guys. Nearly a 50% trigger pull reduction for your SKS. We were, what, a little over four pounds and we got down in the mid twos. I mean, that's really all you need. You don't need anything lighter than that, especially for something like this. I mean, it's a really fantastic firearm and that trigger pull is so much lighter, so much cleaner, and that's the way it should break. It feels really amazing. Thank you, Carbo Brother, for your ideas and your support. Looking forward to your feedback. And as always, happy shooting.